how long does a typical autopsy take? So a typical autopsy, a lot of what I cut are drug overdoses. Um, and we'll talk about those later, but that with a skilled assistant that I've worked with before, I can probably knock a, a, a drug overdose out in 45 minutes to an hour. Um, in more complicated cases, I've gone as long, complicated cases, I've gone as long as eight hours wow. on a single case. Yeah. So there's a, there's a big range and it all depends on what kind of injuries you have, what kind of evidence you have to collect, you know, the facility that you're working in and how efficient that is. That makes a huge difference. What's a quick scenario of like an autopsy that could take like eight hours? Like what is the state of the body that it could take so long? Multiple gunshot wounds where you have to track every bullet path, multiple stab wounds. Um, I think the longest one I ever did was a, a, a woman who was very pregnant and was stabbed multiple times and that took me all day long. So, wow. yeah. Are labs for drugs always run for an autopsy or only for suspected drug overdoses? That's a good question. It depends on the standard of the office. In most of the offices I work for, we always run a, a full tox on everybody. Okay. Um, you can run a, you know, you run a basic screen for illicit drugs, uh, alcohol, um, and you can add things to it like carboxyhemoglobin if you have a fire death or cyanide or carbon monoxide. And actually this is similar. This is also from Holly. I find this one's really interesting. How often are poisons found? Um, when would you suspect uh, the use of a poison, especially in cases where the poison doesn't leave obvious signs? So you should read a book, whoever sent in this question called The Poisoner's Handbook, which is about the dawn of detecting poisons and toxicology. And a lot of that work was done at the New York City Medical Examiner's Office. And it's a fascinating read because there's a certain point, I think it's in the 20s, before which there were poisons that we couldn't detect. So a lot of rich people with relatives who are waiting for them to die, died mysteriously. I don't see poisons very often. I think I've seen, I think a colleague of mine had a case of cyanide, cyanide poisoning. However, if you count fentanyl and, and other opioids, opioids as a poison, which you could, um, then I've seen thousands. So take your pick. But yeah, a, a basic tox screen, I mean, I would have to get specialty testing for things like heavy metals and strychnine and cyanide. Um, Have you seen a bunch of those cases before though? Uh, you know what? No, I actually, it hasn't come up. It hasn't and come up. It's, it's like true that you can like, it's it true that you can like slowly poison someone, right? Yes, you can. You can slowly okay. poison someone with arsenic or um, uh, antifreeze. I actually, hope my husband didn't hear that. I have seen a couple of antifreeze tests. So. Okay. Yeah. Like, is it someone that consumed it themselves or someone that was I've seen poisoned. That. Okay. Interesting. I hope my husband's not on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so moving on to a, a bit of a different beat here. Um, what's one of the most interesting or odd or just different cases that you've worked on that you can think of or something that's stuck with you as well? I can think of a couple, um, any dismemberment cases that stick with you because that is just, you know, well, first of all, people think dismembering a body is a lot easier than it actually is. So what they end up doing is they start with like the tomato knife in the kitchen and then they progress to like, we need to go to Lowe's and look at the power tools <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I should like go on mute while you talk because I'm just going to start laughing. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this um, is great. I've had a couple of interesting cases where people were identified in really interesting ways. Um, tattoo matching is always interesting. Um, uh, I've actually identified someone on a on a head X-ray because your frontal sinuses have a have a unique shape. So I was able to look like at an antemortem and a postmortem radiograph and identify them that way. And I've had a few that oh, the ones that sort of always get me. I you know I, I think I'm three thousand or thirty five hundred cases deep in my career or something like that. And it always surprises me when I still have unidentifieds. And I know that in the popular literature, like there's, you know, John and Jane Doe, that seems like we're just littered with unidentified bodies. But the truth is unclaimed is much more common than unnamed. So we have a ton of unclaimed bodies where no one comes and gets them. I think I can count on two hands a number of genuinely unidentified bodies I've worked on in my career. That's just not that common. Mm -hmm. 